So, when we deal with Bayes' rule, it's just another type of conditional probability. And what it is, is it's kind of a uh, reasoning backwards. So we know that some event occurred, and we're going to try to reason backwards and figure out, well, what's the probability that this happened in the beginning? And we're going to be using those exhaustive events, A1, A2, and A3. So one of them must occur, and then if they're mutually exclusive, only one of them will occur. So that's what we're going to be using with Bayes' rule. Some examples for exhaustive events, male and female, Democrat, Republican, or other, a faced card or not a faced card, uh, ages of adults, 18 to 34, so on and so on. Now the reason this one works because sometimes people think this one doesn't work is because it's ages of adults and in the United States you're not considered an adult until you're 18. So that's why we don't have anything less than 18 on this one. Um, education, you could do less than high school, you could do high school, you could do more than high school. So those are just some general examples of things that might be exhaustive. Okay, when we do Bayes' rule it is absolutely critical to first always decide which thing is the exhaustive piece. That's the A in our formula. So what what items is it that are going to fill the sample space? And then the other piece, the B, is going to be that item that occurs in conjunction, that oval. And here is our Bayes rule formula. Now this is telling, or this is asking me, what's the probability of A sub I, so that's my exhaustive piece, given B. Well that's the probability of the piece in conjunction. So an example for this one, what's the probability of picking a male given that we have that video game player already selected? And if you look at the bottom of this formula, which is actually the scariest piece for most people, it is our rule of total probability. We've already done that. It's saying take up my, or take the sum of my probability of A sub J times the conditional probability of B happening and add them all up. That's going to be my de denominator. Now the top is more specific though. The top, you only take the probability of A sub I, and A sub I is whatever this piece is. And then you times it by the conditional probability of B happening given A sub I. So the top is the individual particular case you're talking about here, and then the bottom is your rule of total probability. So what you're trying to find with Bayes' rule is what's the probability of being a particular one of the exhaustive pieces when you know the probability of the piece that happened in conjunction with it. So let's look at the example we started with. So we've got the 80% of members are male, 20% are female, 50% of the males play video games, and 60% of the males females play video games. What's the probability that a randomly selected person who plays video games was female? So we're asking what's the probability the person was female? Here is our, our A2 piece playing the video game, that's our given piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that chart that we made before to, sh to um, help organize our numbers here, to help put them all where they need to be. Once you have identified what the exhaustive piece is in your chart, the formula will actually fit together pretty nicely. So what it, this question is asking me is what's the probability of being a female? And in my chart, remember, female is represented by A2. So what's the probability of being A2 given I have the video game player? So given B. Now we can go to Bayes' rule, and if you look at the formula for Bayes' rule, we'll be able to figure out where all of our numbers go. So to get the top portion of Bayes' rule, I take the probability of A sub I. So that's saying take the probability of A2. Well, if I look at my chart, the probability of being a female is 0.2. So I would have 0.2. Then it says take that times the probability of B given AI. Well, the probability of being a video game player, given that I'm a female, is 0.6 then I have to divide that by this rule of total probability. So I have to take my probability of each A value, so each of these, 
times I'm going to add them. So I'm going to take the point 0.8 times that point 0.5, which gives me point 0.4, and then I'm going to take the point 0.2 times that point 0.6, which gives me point 0.12, and I'm going to add those together. So I actually have point 0.8 times point 0.5 plus 0.2 times 0.6. Now when I go to start to simplify this, I'm going to have 0.12 divided by 0.52. Divide that out and what I get is 0.231. So the question here says, what's the probability that a randomly selected person who plays video games was female 0.231. So if I have to interpret that in terms of percentage, that's telling me that 23% of the people who play video games are females. Now if you think about the example we did before with the numbers where we ended up with 80 males and 40 of them played video games, 12 of the females, and there was 20 females, we could have figured that out using our numbers up here. Because what it's saying was that out of our group of video game players, so out of these 52 people, how many of them are female? Well, we have 12. And if you notice, 12 out of 52 is what we got right down here. This one would be in terms of the numbers of people. This one would be terms in probability, which is why we have the decimal compared to the whole number. But when you divide them out, you get the exact same number. So Bayes' rule, it looks very complicated, but if you can get this chart set up, the calculation itself becomes quite easy.